What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to explain the full backstory of Hawks, who is currently the number two hero in the world of My Hero Academia. This character was first introduced as someone who quickly rose through the ranks of Hero Society, but unlike the previous number two hero who was obsessed with being the strongest, Hawks could not have had a more different outlook on life. He outright stated that he would have preferred to have been ranked lower in the charts so he could have more freedom to do what he wants, and envisioned a world in which heroes would have a ton of free time to relax. His reason for thinking this way becomes clearer when we look into his backstory, so this video will cover everything there is to know about Hawks, from his early childhood all the way up until his first appearance in the anime. Before we begin though, don't forget to sub for more My Hero Academia videos like this, and remember that my new Discord server is now open for anyone to join, where we talk about My Hero Academia as well as a bunch of other series. For the anime onlys watching, there will be spoilers ahead for Hawks' backstory specifically, um, so if you'd rather wait till season 6 or potentially season 7 of the anime, then pause the video now. Okay, so to begin, Hawks' real name is Keigo Takami, and he was born in the outskirts of Fukuoka. This city is located on the island of Kyushu, and in the real world, Fukuoka has a baseball team literally named the Hawks, which I don't think is a coincidence. In his childhood, Hawks' father was a low-level villain who we only know as Takami, and he had been on the run from the law after killing a guy over some pocket change. Takami was also a known thief, but he managed to evade the authorities thanks to the help of Tomi, who is Hawks' mother. Tomi had a quirk that gave her a pair of levitating eyeballs, presumably allowing her to view things from a distance. Over the years, Takami relied on Tomi's quirk to keep themselves hidden and find new criminal opportunities. At some point, Tomi accidentally got pregnant, giving birth to Hawks in this rundown shack on the outskirts of the city. The shack itself was completely filthy, with garbage scattered all across the floor, and as you can tell, Hawks did not have a great time growing up here. Takami was constantly paranoid that people were looking for him, so Hawks was not allowed to leave the house because Takami thought his son might rat him out. As a result, he spent a ton of time indoors as a kid, and on one occasion his mother secretly took him out so he would stop whining. The two of them went to a grocery store, where Tomi purchased an Endeavor doll for her son because the Endeavor toy was six times cheaper than the All Might one. In the panel, we can see the Endeavor dolls are on sale, which just shows that, you know, he was never really near All Might's level of popularity. But at the same time, the doll was something that Hawks treasured a lot. He could be seen carrying it around all the time, not to mention that during his bad days, he would hug the doll for comfort. I'll talk about this more very soon, but when Hawk's mother purchased this toy, she said to him that she hopes he could one day grow up to be as strong as Endeavor. Anyway, back home, Hawks' father would physically attack his son for trivial reasons, despite the fact that he was a quiet child who never really did anything wrong. Hawks endured the abuse in the hope that he could make it out and not end up like his parents, but at this stage he still didn't have the desire to become a hero. In his words, the only time he ever saw heroes was on the TV, so the idea of them was more of a fantasy than a reality. As a poor child living on the outskirts of a city, heroes didn't connect to his everyday life, so it's definitely understandable that he would think this way. On one fateful day, Takami was finally arrested by the authorities after stealing a car, and the person who caught Hawks' father was none other than Endeavor himself. With this one action, pro heroes finally became real in his mind, and the fact that it was Endeavor made it even sweeter because, obviously, he already had the Endeavor plushie. With his father out of the picture, Hawks' life instantly began to change, although at the beginning it wasn't so great. His mother was afraid that she'd get arrested for helping to calm me all those years, so both her and Hawks left the family shack that same day. The problem was that Tomi didn't have the necessary skills to raise a child in regular society, so the two ended up living on the streets with no money. Hawks' only possession was his Endeavor plushie and the clothes on his back, so he suggested that they go to the police. Instead, his mother taunted him for not putting his wings to good use, as she wanted him to utilize his quirk to get them some money. If Hawks wanted to, he definitely could have used his powers for theft, I mean, it's almost perfect for that, but I feel like his idolization of Endeavor meant that he wanted to do things the right way. Following this, there was one day in which Hawks went out by himself, probably to collect supplies, as we see he has a little uh, bag there, and as he was walking by, there was a high-speed car accident. His feathers must have tingled in the same way they did before, and he proceeded to save every single last person. This panel of his feathers pulling people away from the wreckage is quite reminiscent of what happened during the Pro Hero arc, but for Hawks to have done all of this as an untrained little kid, yeah, that's pretty incredible. After the incident, he immediately left, so no one actually knew who he was, but someone from the Public Safety Commission heard about what happened. They couldn't believe that someone so young performed this act of heroism, and a search was launched to find this wonder child as quickly as possible. 
Tomi and Hawks were then approached by two agents from the safety commission, with Tomi being made an offer she couldn't refuse. In exchange for handing her son over, she would get indefinite financial support and her connection to Takami would be erased. That meant she would not get in any trouble for the crime she helped Takami commit, plus she would be able to start a new life with all the cash. Needless to say, Hawks was separated from Tomi in that moment and going forward, the safety commission made him give up his name. The name Keigo Takami was erased and the Public Safety Commission had the unique opportunity to mold this child into a special hero who had no ties to anyone. Before entering the special hero training program, they informed Hawks that the training would be brutal but the idea of becoming someone like Endeavor is what spurred him on to take the opportunity. This ties into what Hawks' mother had said to him when they got the doll in the first place. For at least the next decade, Hawks would learn a bunch of different skill sets from the training program, with one of the drills being shown in the post credits during season 4. In this exercise, we can see that Hawks was blindfolded and made to use the vibrations from his feathers to visualize his surroundings. That training clearly paid off, but still it must have been really grueling for a young child. Later in the manga, he reveals that he had interpersonal skills drilled into him from a young age, which is something that helps him get information out of people and build new relationships. At the age of 18, Hawks finally finished his training and became a professional hero with his own agency. This in itself is very unusual, as most new heroes work as sidekicks after graduation and then if they're popular enough, they'll go independent later on. Starting an agency at the age that Hawks did is just not something you see very often, but the madness didn't end there as later that same year he was ranked in the top 10 heroes. That made him the first ever person to achieve top 10 status as a teenager, even faster than his idol Endeavor. Flash forward a few years and Hawks was interested in learning more about the League of Villains after they attacked Yue, so he observed the kids from Class 1A during the sports festival. His goal was to take one of these students on an internship so he could use those communication skills to get some information out of them. His original target was to get Shoto Todoroki, but he ended up going for Tokiyami instead as they're both birds. However, Tokiyami felt like he didn't learn anything during this internship because Hawks was too fast for him to keep up with and whenever they did have time to chat, all Hawks would ask him about was the USJ attack. After the battle in Kamino between All For One and All Might, Hawks was approached by the Public Safety Commission with a mission that only he was capable of doing. On the orders of the head of the commission, Hawks was told to infiltrate the League of Villains and become a double agent. His task was to pretend he aligned with the League's goals, therefore joining the organization and passing back valuable information to the heroes that could be used to take the villains down. He had no choice but to accept the mission, as his training and his current circumstance at that time meant that he was the only person that could pull this off. As a result, he then got in contact with Darby from the League of Villains, with the two of them reaching a verbal agreement. Darby said he wanted to test the fighting power of a Nomu, and asked Hawks to bring someone who was kind of strong to a specified location. Darby would later go back on this agreement, and he changed the location and the date of the test to when Hawks and Endeavor were together. The High End was never meant to attack at this location, but you know, Darby's a villain so he's gonna do shady things. One last thing to mention, before the pro hero arc, Tokiyami was invited back to Hawks' agency for a work study. He did this work study at the same time that Deku was working with Senaitai, and it turned out to be a lot more productive than Tokiyami's previous internship. This time around, Tokiyami had massively improved, so much so that he was kind of able to keep up with Hawks' speed, and as a reward, Hawks gave him an important lesson. We'll be seeing this interaction play out in Season 5, but basically Hawks' advice allowed Tokiyami to unlock a new super move, which we see him use during the joint training arc. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Hawks' backstory. I mean, one thing I would say is that it's surprising the amount of characters in this series who just have terrible fathers, or fathers who never show up. Like, it is quite incredible the amount. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help out the channel, and until the next one, peace out.